Today on the History Channel, we look through episode 3 in our series of the Spanish Conquest in the Americas. Today we will be specifically looking at the reasons for and the nature of the conquest. Join us as we explore through this interesting journey. February 1519. Disaster shook the Aztec Empire by the landing of Hernan Cortes, a Spanish conquistador determined on seeking fame and fortune. From Christopher Columbus's exploration into the Americas, the Spanish were informed of the riches in the Americas, such as gold and other commodities. They were also told of the relative ease in which this wealth could be acquired. The Spanish additionally knew that new colonies created wealth through tax, trade, and enslavement of the locals. This potential for wealth caused the Spanish government to commission the conquest of the Americas and influenced several ambitious Spaniards to go to the Americas. The Spanish were also highly interested in finding new trade routes as trading was a major source of revenue for the Spanish. Trade routes between Spain and Asia were especially desired as several other countries had gained wealth through trade with Asia. The Aztecs originally thought that Cortes, who was the leader of the Spanish, was the god Quetzalcoatl, as Cortes had arrived on Quetzalcoatl's birthday. Quetzalcoatl had vowed that he would appear when the end of the world was near, that he would come and save the Aztecs. This gave the Spanish a huge advantage over the Aztecs, as they had no such inhibitions and could do as they pleased without fear of offending the gods. When the Spanish landed in the Americas, they first encountered the Totonac tribe, who agreed to ally with the Spanish in order to overthrow the Aztec masters. Then the Spanish encountered and combated the Tlaxcalan tribe, whose lands lay between the coast and the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan and were victorious. The defeated Tlaxcalans then joined the Spanish alliance and they progressed onwards towards Tenochtitlan. The Spanish and the Tlaxcalans arrived in Tenochtitlan in November 1519. There they met Montezuma, who is the current emperor of the Aztec Empire. He soon realised that the Cortes and the Spanish were not holy, but were actually in pursuit of money. As relations became more hostile, Cortes took Montezuma hostage and seized Tenochtitlan. However, in May 1520, Cortes briefly left and some Spaniards massacred Aztec nobles during a festival. This led to the Aztecs uprising against the Spanish and the Spanish Tlaxcalan forces losing Tenochtitlan. It is thought that Montezuma was killed during this time. Then the Spaniards retreated to the territory of the Tlaxcalan allies temporarily. After that they set on a brutal campaign to take the surrounding regions held by the Aztec allies. This campaign was partially successful with half the lands being captured. Several tribes additionally allied with the Spanish as they feared that they would be killed if they opposed the conquistadors. In May 1521, Cortes returned to Chitlin and besieged the city with a force of 550 Spaniards and 10,000 local tribesmen, mainly to excellence. They executed daily attacks and used boats to cut off the supply of food. They also destroyed the aqueduct that brought water to the city. The city fell to Spanish forces on August 1521. This signified the fall of the Aztec Empire. The Spanish had superior weaponry over the Aztecs, which had made fighting them much easier. The Spanish had metal swords and guns, which were highly effective against the Aztecs' cotton wool and animal skin armour. The Aztec weapons of spears and clubs were inadequate against the Conquistador's metal arm. This ineffectiveness was also compounded by the diseases the Spanish brought back from Europe, which the Aztecs had very little immunity to. Join us next week as we look at the impact of the conquest on Aztec society.